Hello folks, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to make a quilt ladder. Not just any quilt ladder. This is a beautiful furniture quality project that you and your loved ones will be proud of. It's put together with pocket hole joinery and it has some really elegant features. It's designed to fit flush against the wall and the floor and it has these vertical rungs. They provide extra capacity for your quilts, but they are super strong. <laughs> Now, the angles may look complicated, but they're really not. I made this rack and plotted all the angles using a stick of wood and a simple shop made jig. No math, no complicated measurements. So stick with me and I'll take you through it step by step. Our first step is to cut our boards to the correct size. Now all of our boards for the rungs and for the sides will be three inches wide. So I'm going to rip all of my boards to that width. The ladder is uh, right at 84 inches tall. So I'm going to cross cut my size to that length. Now I'm using a cross cut stop for all of my boards. And this will allow me to cut my pieces to an exact length and then to duplicate it for all my pieces. The ladder rungs are 20 inches long. Notice that I make a squaring cut on one end and then I slide that against the stop and then cut the other end. Don't just assume that lumber from the lumber yard has square ends. Computing the angles is simplicity itself. So prop your side up against the wall and measure the distance you want it from the wall. I set mine at 21 inches. When we cut the angles we're going to lose part of our board. Afterwards it should end up being about 18 inches from the wall which is perfect. Take a scrap of 1 by 4 uh, put it flat up against the wall and mark your angle at the top and you can do the same thing at the bottom. When we take our board back to the shop we will transfer these angles to where they actually need to be. And for now just mark one of your sides. Now this tool is called a bevel gauge. These are sold in most tool stores and lumber yards. So loosen the screw and hold the wood handle tightly against the side of your board. And then set the blade uh, right on your angled mark. And then retighten the screw. Now move the gauge down the board and line up slightly above the bottom corner. Now you can make your mark. And now we successfully transfer the angle so now we can go cut it. Before I put the bevel gauge away, I'm going to use it to set up the angle cut and I'm going to lock my saw into place to match the gauge. If you're using a table saw, you can set your miter gauge up the same way. Remember though, we only want to cut one of our sides for now. To transfer this line for the top piece, we're going to need to make a special purpose jig. Now, I hope you can see this line okay on the camera but this line is actually too low. Now it's going to come here and it's going to terminate about right here at a point which is not really what we want. We want this line to move up the board and I probably want it to terminate about right here. I don't want my board to come to a real point on the wall. I want a kind of a nub up here that we can round over and make look really nice and pretty and finished. So how do we move this? So to transfer the line we're going to build a jig. Also, uh, we'll be using this as a router guide, so our router will have to ride on this. So be sure to use this piece of board that has a smooth edge. This is the smooth side. This side is very rough in chipboard. Also, you want to have this set up so that the ends will hang off the board on each end. And that's because we're going to make marks at the very edge of the board. If the bo this board is too sharp, we won't be able to do that. Now I'm going to set my jig right on that reference line and I'm going to clamp it in place. All right. Now the second component of the jig is just a straight edge piece of 1x2 or 1x2 scrap. This is a piece of plywood. It just has to have a good straight edge. And it does. And you want both ends to extend beyond the board a bit for clamping. So I'm going to clamp this to the board now. I'm going to push it up good and tight against my piece here. I'm going to drill some holes to attach this. And I'm going to use a piloted bit here 
and, a wood, and some wood screws. And these need to be countersunk. The reason it needs to be countersunk is because your router is going to be, need to ride over these screws. So that's lined up there. So notice that as I move down the board, that angle moves with me. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll put a, a nub about maybe right here. I'm just eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I'll terminate my next line there. Also, I really wouldn't recommend using a marks a lot. I'm doing that so you can see it in the in the video. But notice how even the edge of the board rides with me. So I can draw a line here, and it's going to go all the way off the board, like so. And there we go. That's where we're going to cut our line. Now I'm going to take a saw and cut about an eighth inch outside this line. Then we will reinstall our jig, and we'll take a piloted router bit. We'll route that off smooth. Nothing to it. I've made several of these jigs for different ladders, and you will see a different one used later in this video. But remember, uh, the functionality will be just the same. You only have to make this one jig for this project. We're using a router that has a ball bearing guide. Be sure to set your router height so that the bearing will ride on the edge of your jig like so. Otherwise, it will gouge up your ladder side. Now reposition your jig on the reference line and clamp your jig in place. Now you can route off the excess. Don't forget to move your clamp before you route to the end of the board. So great! We have side A with our angles just right. What we need to do now is sandwich our two sides together, flush them up all the way around and clamp them together, and now you can transfer the angles to side B with your pencil. You can separate the sides now, and using your jig and the same procedure as before, you can trim off the top end. I clamped the sides back together again, and then sanded my angles. And while the boards are together, you can round over your ends. Now when this is done, you can go ahead and cut your bottom angle. I sandwich my sides back together with the top end square and flush, and then trim both bottoms at the same time. I cut all the way through side B. And I took about a sixteenth of an inch, I guess, off the already trim bottom of side A. And what I ended up with was identical boards with identical angles. So we will set these aside for right now. Next I'm going to put the pocket holes on the rungs. I set my square at a little over a half an inch and make marks for my pocket hole locations on the front side of the board. When I put the board in the jig, I line up the marks on the board with the positioning marks of the jig, of course. Notice that the good side is facing out now and I'm actually drilling into the back side of the board, which is what you want to do. After the first one's cut, reposition the board and cut the second hole, then swap ends and cut the other end. Now if your jig looks more like this, you will need to extend your lines to make them work with your jig and its positioning marks. And also remember, you want to make your holes on the back side of the board. Before sanding, I used a 1 8 inch roundover bit and eased all of my edges. Removing those sharp edges is better for your quilts, and a rounded edge is also safer if you have young children in your home. Before we lay out the positioning marks for the ladder rungs, I want to go ahead and sand all my pieces smooth. That way when we make these marks uh, on the board, we can just go ahead and install the rungs and then remove the uh, pencil marks with a little denatured alcohol. That way we won't have to disassemble them again. So first I puttied all of the knot holes and any irregularities in the board. 
I'm using a product here called Drydex. It goes on blue, but it will dry to a white color. And when that was dry, I used a damp rag, uh, wiped down my boards to erase the grain. And then I started with coarse, then 100 grit, and then 120 grit sandpaper. And when done, I sealed all of the putty knot holes with kilt stain blocker. Now we're ready to lay out our sides and to position our ladder rungs. But first we have to do some measurements and layout. So put your boards together like so, flush them up and clamp them in place, bottom and top. Now measure up from the bottom 18 inches and mark. That'll be the top of your first rung. Then go up the ladder and mark at 13 and a half inch intervals. This will define the position of each rung. Using your square, extend your marks across the board with a light pencil line. Unclamp and separate your boards and set your square at 13 sixteenths of an inch. Butt it up against the side's front edge and draw down toward the bottom of the ladder like so. A couple of inches is enough. So let's take our jig now and we're going to fit our rungs to the board. Now what I want to do, and what I've done is I've cut a piece the exact same width and thickness of my rungs. And here we can see, here's my line, and here's my reference line that was three quarter inches from the front of the board. What I want to do is have this edge touch the line that crosses the board, and I want this edge to touch the line that goes this way, the three quarter inch line. like so. And of course I have to worry about this angle. It could be like this, it could be like this. So what I want to do now is take my jig and slide it down to where it reaches that criteria. Okay, I've got the lines here and here. And I'm going to slide my jig up. And this takes a little trial and error, folks. Now you'll notice I put a line on my jig where it crosses this line. And that's the point at which it is perfectly lined up. So what I want to do is line that up like it is. Okay. And clamp it to the board. What I want to do is make this a repeatable thing where I can just move this up and down the board and quickly put in my uh, rungs. Now what I'm going to do is put that back in position. I'm just going to take a little piece of square cut stuff and butt that up against the back. Now you could glue this to your jig if you wanted to. I don't know that I may be using this jig again. So I'm just going to clamp it in place. Okay. So now if I put it against the stop I'm right on the money, both ways. With our jig in place, we can go ahead and install the first rung. And I'm simply just going to hold it tightly against the jig, and the jig I'm going to pull snugly against the side, and then install our screws. And then we simply move the jig to each location, secure it, and repeat for all five rungs. So with side A done, you're probably asking the question, do we have to do all that setup again for side B? Well, the good news is no. It's much more simple. Lay the assembled ladder down on its back, front facing up. The pocket hole should be on the bottom. If you have your rungs all placed correctly at 13 16 inch from the front edge, then we can simply take a couple of pieces of squared and true scrap Lay them on top as shown and mark along the top edge. And next you can rip them along both lines. Now turn your ladder over, pocket holes facing up, and slip the shims under the open end. I'm using a piece of plywood with the bottom and sides square to each other. And I'm going to clamp my ladder in place with the sides and bottom flush with the plywood edges. 
Now the cross lines on side B should match up with the tops of the rungs. If not, you can experiment with loosening and tightening the screws on side A. This, this is why it was so important to make sure that both ends of your rungs were square cut. All I have to do now is simply install my screws, making sure the rung is making contact with the shim on bottom and is touching the line on side A. Once our screws are all in, we can take our ladder inside and try a test fit against the wall. And it's perfect. <laughs> We're back in the shop and now we can start our finishing process. Now, if you put really light pencil lines on like I recommended, you can remove those with a little denatured alcohol. If you put them on heavy, you'll probably have to sand them off. Next, I'm going to paint the ladder with an espresso paint color to match our furniture. Now, I'm going to put on three coats. Okay, we've let it cure for a couple of days, and now we can put it against the wall, and we can start loading it with our quilts. My little quilter is helping me here, and she made most of these. But the top one was made by her great-grandmother, hand-stitched. This ladder turned out great, didn't it? But in the near future, I will be designing and building a mortise and tenon version and filming it, of course. It will truly be heirloom quality. And we will have more woodworking, DIY projects, and reviews of tools and home products. So be sure to go below and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to ring that bell. <laughs> and while you're there, you might as well go ahead and like our video. And remember, questions and comments are appreciated and welcome, and I will respond to you. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching.